Very graceful. Praise the Lord. So today we are going to talk about the tolerant church, Theatira. Theatira was a small church. It was the smallest of the seven cities, but the one that received the longest letter. We call them the love letters which the Lord Jesus Christ was writing to the churches. And in every one of these letters, the Lord had something to talk about. But as he was coming, he wanted to relate to the church. And he did not come as a boss. He came as somebody who could identify with us. I know what you are going through, but I also have got this against you. But I commend you for doing this. But in this area, you must do, and do better. So we could see he did not come and condemn. You are going to help. You are going to help say no. The things that we are doing right, he commends you for that. But the things that you are doing wrong, say, hold fast that which you have. We can see outrightly, he did not come to condemn. He came to encourage. So this is the message that we are going to try to see what the Lord had for us. Like I said, it was one of the smallest of the seven cities, but the one that received the longest love head. It was about 60 miles from the Pegamum this city that was married to the world, which was famous for its textiles. This church was doing many things well, but they were also led astray by someone teaching false doctrine. Evidently, it was a woman who was claiming to be a prophetess, who has been influencing someone, some people in the church to join the local, the local trade guild. It's like a local trade, um, trade which the tradesman could not trade, could not work in the local, in that city, Theatira. So this meant that um, people were being compromised now. So by participation in this, uh, in their feast, they included moral acts and work to provide it. Like we see here, they've got some, um, they've got some festivals which they have here, especially in Europe. I've forgotten some of them, they like Halloween. On those Halloween, they drink beer, they do other things, immoral things. So because you are in business, they'll say, ah, tomorrow we are going to do this after work. You go, so this is how people are getting compromised. Where you are supposed to say no, you don't say no. So these are some of the things that people end up getting compromised. So through their participation, they ended up getting into the immoral. But sometimes the pressure of fitting in with the world is so overwhelming that when people, that people cannot stand firm in the faith. That is where the problem of this church is. So we are to stand firm on the truth of God's way and not to tolerate those that are trying to lower the standard or to make it a little bit loose that it can accommodate the world. Sometimes when we approach people we try to make it like, you know, God understands. There is nothing to understand. The Bible makes it very clear. Don't lower the standard of what is in it. If you remove, so will be your plaques. If you add, so will be your plaques. So the Bible makes it very clear. Don't add anything into this. Your opinion, my opinion is not needed. If we have got a misunderstanding or some interpretation that we need in the Bible, we ask the Holy Spirit, who is the final author in this book? You don't seek my opinion. I have always refused, unless I can come up with five to 10 scriptures, I, can, I cannot sufficiently say, I know what the scripture means. I've seen people who are arrogant, they want to explain the whole Bible without scripture. They say, no, I know what it means. That's arrogance, that's pride. Only God can come and say, that's what I meant. And that was, upon which authority will I be saying conclusively, that's what God meant. This is the same thing that the Pharisees were doing and the Sadducees for 465 years between Malachi and the book of Matthew, God was silent. And that's when they said God is saying, because God was silent. If God is not speaking, we speak and attribute it to God. So we need to be careful. That's how gospel has been distorted throughout the ages. That's how strength fire has come into the church today. 
when God is not speaking, we speak. The fire that God said should not go out. We just bring fire. When you come in, we just see in. I was talking to one minister today in the afternoon. I was just telling him something. You can make the same ministration that I make, the one that 200 people came crying. You take, I give you the same ministration, word for word. You go in, you see people playing on their phone. But as I was ministering, people were crying, people were weeping. The moment I call an altar call, people were almost crashing their heads, running to the pulpit. Why? The difference is my word was, he had the spirit in it, and your word was only the word. It is the spirit that moves and convicts a person. It is your spirit that is convicted, not your flesh. So we need to be very careful that we do not get compromised along the way. So as we study this letter at title, we want to be open to what God wants us, wants to teach us through this message to this chain. It's very important. It's extremely important. This church was written in the book of um, Revelation chapter two, verse 18 to 29. So we are not going to read it all because it's, the, it's one of the longest. It is the longest, it was the smallest, but it's the longest. Or oh, let us read it since it's a Bible study. You know, I, I want to challenge us to read this. So I'll ask Sister Noella, can you read for us verses 18 to 21, Saint Sonia 22 to 25. Auntie Jovita, you can finish. But the team will come into the next one that I want you to read. Revelation what, sir? Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, 21. Revel Revelation chapter 2, verse 18 to 21, I read. Amen. Or 18 to, 18 to 22, 22, 26, and 26 to finish. Okay. I read 18 to 22. And unto the angel of the church in Tyatira write, These things said the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Verse 22, behold, I will cast her into a bed and then and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Amen. 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 And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Phytera, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depth of sin, and say and they speak as they speak i will put upon you none other burden but that which ye have already hold fast till i come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the hand to him will i give power over the nations and he can finish amen and with in jesus name and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter sh shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said 
unto the churches. Amen. Amen. So we can see here the Lord Jesus Christ is being described as the Son of God. I think that is the only time in the book of Revelation where he's now being described as the Son of God. So what are the reasons? And why is it being used in this church that is the Son of God? Whose eyes are like, are like the flame of fire, the one that was used in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. His flame, like the eyes, suggested discerning and severe judgment. Like his eyes are like the flame of fire. The flame, when there's a flame, there's light. You will see everything that is hidden. Fire, it means judgment, severe judgment. So light comes with judgment. Remember, fire is there to burn. So these things are very significant when they are written in the Bible. People just say, ah, his eyes like a fire. It is something that God puts in there but we need, when we are teaching people, we don't just say flame like his eyes were red. Not red like these people you see, you see smoking evil. No, these are red. Red signifying that when he comes, he sees anything that is done in private, in secret, and then his judgment comes thereafter. So we should know. And banished means highly reflective. And it means, so what, is, what does it mean? Um, how is it appropriate for this specific church? Because he is talking about Jezebel. So the founding of this church at Thyatira is not mentioned in this Bible. However, there is something that was mentioned. There is a woman who was mentioned in Acts chapter, 4, Acts chapter 16, verse 14. They said, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of people of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, tended unto the things which were spoken of all. So this was the first time Thyatira was mentioned in the book of Acts, the church in Acts. So a church may feel satisfied with itself, have a good reputation in the community. Like we saw the church of Sardis, a reputation of being alive. Programs are going on, yet nothing is changing in your life. 20 years in church, nothing is changing. People still know, people still, people know you as worse, much worse as a Christian than you were in the world. What is the difference? Are we truly, have we truly accepted the Lord as Lord and Savior? So the penetrating eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ sees it as it really is. We as human beings, we move with an outward appearance. That's what you see. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How many of us would call our husband, sir? Idiot. Ah, oh, my God. If videos were to be followed everywhere, you will hear the abuses. That's very hypocrisy. If the Lord Jesus Christ is standing here, would we do the same things? Many women are going to church with red eyes. No, when I was cleaning yesterday, I just hit my, my, my on the door. This is the same pastor that is giving a message here. People are saying, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why? There's no spirit in that message. The message is just tickling the ear. There is no spirit in that message. That's good for you. The letter kill it. It's only the letter. There is nothing in it. So as God searches our heart and mind today, what is he going to find? What does our heart, what does your heart and mind dwell on? I want us to look, because this church, he said this church was, um, you know, it, it, like we said, it was a church that, um, how should you call it? It was a tolerant church. It was a church that, compromised to a certain degree, they ended up accepting things that, you know, in trying to reach out to the world, the church turned out more to be like the world. Right now, we find more people in the world, better Christian, listen, they are not Christians, but they are better people out there. Remember the young rich ruler that the Lord Jesus Christ met. The one is he asked, he said, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of God? He said, Observe the Ten Commandments. The young man laughed. 
He laughed at the Lord Jesus Christ to scorn. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ looked at him and said, said, those ones, I observed them. The Lord looked at him like this. He was, remember, he was telling me before he turned it. And the Lord looked at him. The Bible says he laughed him. Why? Because he was telling the truth. He was standing before God, telling God, say, 10 commandments from 1 to 10. I observed those ones. God looked at him and said, yes, he's telling. He said he loved him. He said, now we are left with one thing. And you say, we will go and pay to the poor. That's when he went sorrowfully. But the first part, he fulfilled that part. So you can see this man was not a Christian. How many such people do we have in the world who are living, let's call it a righteous life without Christian, without, which I, without the Lord Jesus Christ. They are living a good life without, without the Lord Jesus Christ. Just imagine standing before God and say, God, he loved, he loved at God. He said, God, talk, talk about 10 commandments. What is 10 commandments? How many general overseers can stand out of 20? If one can come in and stand, say out of 20, if one can come with two, from 10, one to 10, if one can come and say, mm, can pass. But this one was not a pastor. Just imagine, this one was not a pastor. He passed the test before God. We need grace. We really need grace. We really need grace, brethren. So like I said, as we are looking to reflect on our life, as God looks at us with his penetrating eyes, which sees everything, would he be disappointed with us as a church, as CHMI? Will he be disappointed with you as an individual? If so, why? How do you live your life as an individual? I've said a church, what, what you do matters. There is a woman that I canceled about 10 or 12 years ago, you know, they used to fight in the church. So I told them, if you fight again, I'm going to chase you out of the church. So I told them, now I want you to go home. I'll come to your place tomorrow. But they asked the husband to call me because I never went to, to, their house, to the house invited by the woman. It is the husband that invites me and I came. The husband called me. I drove 40 kilometers away to meet with him. So when I arrived, the woman started, useless man. Talk, 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 talk. Insulted the man. I kept quiet as before. After finishing ranting, 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 I asked some few questions, some few questions. Who pays for the for this house rent? I say, is this your house here? I said, no. I said, so you pay house rent? Say, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I say, who pay? Does the government pay rent or is it being paid by the church or some so church? You should be paying if it's the church. I say, no, it's him that pays. This foolish man he said, yes. I said, okay. What about the food in the house? Do you go in the shop and just get the food? I said, no, we go and buy. Say, where do you get the money from? She looked again, and said, she, she pointed the finger and said, speak. You are not, you are not deaf and dumb. Is it not the same mouth that was insulting two minutes ago? Speak. They say, ah, hmm, my husband. All of, a, all of a sudden, he becomes a husband. But I'm saying, just imagine, this is a person when you hear them blasting tongues, blasting tongues, standing before the people and say, oh, I have seen Christianity will sweet somebody. And here, they're insulting the husband. When I spoke to him, I asked this in questions. Then she began to weep. I said, weep not to me. You apologize to him. I'm not the, I'm not the one who paid the honor. I refuse to take the honor. After God, it's your husband, not me. Not me. I did not pay the dowry. That's, what, that's the order of the Bible. You just respect me, honor me as a servant of God. But him, that's him, not me. I don't come like do like other servants of God to come and say, no, no. I come and run your house. I don't run your home. Your home is your responsibility and your husband, not mine. But many ministers of God have destroyed the same homes that we are trying to protect, which I think is a shame. We come in, especially women, they let like wisdom. Pastor, what should I do? My husband, this. They have destroyed homes. Many of the ministers of God, they have not been trained for this job. 
they come in with their eyes closed like this. Oh no, no, you should do this. The word of the Bible. Say God, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, forget that one. What Father in the mighty name of Jesus? You want to destroy somebody's home and say, Father, there are spiritual matters. There are matters that need wisdom. It's not everything that you feel, you close your eyes and start praying. We need wisdom as a church. So, like I said, we are looking at us reflectively. That's why I was just mentioning this part. If God is looking at us, will he be disappointed with us as CHMI? If he's looking at you as an individual, will he be disappointed? If so, why? Why will he be disappointed with you? I, I was giving you an example of somebody 10 years ago. But when you see them out there, you will say, oh, I've met the most decent woman ever. But there, a sheep dog ready to punch the air. This is where people move with an outward appearance, where people approve us. They approve of us. But right there, people ask. That's not Christianity. That is not Christianity. Christianity is what we live in private must be the same message that we do in public. So the Lord recommended this church for their qualities, which was vital to spiritual growth. So there are similarities which Apostle Paul gave to the commendation to Thyatira, which we can find in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Let's see what it says. That the Chimi, First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven and twelve. Please forgive me; I'll be drinking water. First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven and twelve. First Timothy. Amen. Amen. First Timothy chapter two. Chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Okay, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Yes, please. I read. But thou, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Amen. This was Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. So oh, this was a commendation. So we can see some similarities here. When you read to the church from the, to, to in the church of um, um, Theatira, the same recommendations, same commendation, you can see them. They were being encouraged. So we, what kind of encouragement, what kind of similarities can we get from the commendation with this, with which this church got? What are the qualities? How are the qualities of love, faith, perseverance related? How is our faith? How is our love? Especially love. When we talk about love, I've seen ministers of God that do not talk with members of their family. Yet when they climb the pulpit like this, some they don't even talk to their parents. I don't want to talk to that old man. I don't want to talk to that old man. The same Bible say, honor your parents. So that your days, people, I, I, let me just explain it has nothing to do with our teaching. And the Bible say, honor your parents that your days will be long. If children were disobedient, they would be stoned to death. This is why the, during that time, he say, if you honor your parents, you're, you will live and grow into a person that is going to marry. So if you are disobedient, you disobey your parents, then you, you, you get stoned and die young. So these Pharisees now, the one that were being rebuked by, by the Lord in Matthew chapter, um, I think eight, seven or eight, where, where the Lord was rebuking them, 
they say you change the traditions of the, the, the laws of God, honoring the traditions of men. So when the children misbehaved from home, they ran and hid in the church. So they said, no, no, he was working in the church. They started protecting them. They were supposed to be stoned to death. Because that was the law then. So this is why the Lord Jesus Christ was rebuking them. You Pharisees, you hypocrites. You change the law of God and honoring the traditions of men. So that is where it came about. So love, faith, and service is very important. How do we save God? Do we save God in love? How is our faith? Because all these things, they are related and your perseverance. So from this, Sister Sonia, which one is your, which one is your strongest? Sank Sonia. Yes, sir. Which one is your strongest? Among the commandments. Love, faith, service, perseverance. Uh, no, for me. Any one of us. Personally. Yeah, I say personally, looking at them, I would have had my choice. <laughs> like, I would have chosen even perseverance over love. But the Bible has told us that love is the greatest. No, I, no, no. We, we, I want you to choose your strongest. <laughs> no, do, do not forget you are working in progress. You and I, we are working in progress. Don't forget that. Yeah. We are working in progress. We are not finished. That's why you repent every day. If you don't repent every day, Sister Sonia, you're not going to make it. That's true, sir. If you don't, if you hear somebody say me to repent over what? You are not a Christian. Forget about it. Forget about it. You are not a Christian. We commit sins that we don't even know or sins that have been committed on our behalf. So you've got to repent. There are sins of omission, sins of commission. Yes, we are called to love. But how is your faith? Do you know like do you know lack of faith is a sin? Yes, sir. Faith is one, it, faith was named as the third greatest gift. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. The, the word of knowledge, um, gift of the word of no, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the gift of faith. Those three, those are the most powerful. Okay, is Minister Theo there? Let me go to the better half. Minister Theo, are you in? Minister Theo? Minister Theo, fellas? Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Can you tell us? What do you think? We are talking about the qualities of love, faith, service, perseverance. Which of these qualities is your strongest? Mm, with God, Jesus God talked talk about love before. He said the greatest love. So I Christian supposed to exhibit this love. Because with love, we could be able to record the rest. Yeah, we, we know, but I said now, which of you, yours, yourself now, which of these qualities are you the strong? We, or, or, uh, we, how should I put it? In which of these qualities are you the strongest? The, the, the one I, 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 I have. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't not know. The, not what the Bible, not what the Bible. What the Bible, because if we look at the standard of the Bible, you and I will follow each other. Yeah. So we will not be here. Yeah, yeah. Me, I actually like to uh, try to practice love for me. That is what I also love. So you will say that is your strongest. Yeah. So your faith is very little. Yes, sir. And your service? Mm, my service can be. I will say 50%, so I cannot 100% say because I have no almost available most times. Okay. Thank you. Dada Chimi. <laughs> I, 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 
I have a date you talk today. <laughs> I'm, follow, I'm following Pastor C. Y. Former today. I want to be talking to people. Hmm. I, I don't even know which one to say. I am. I am. No righteousness. Mm -mm. You, you can say, you know, you can say perseverance, even in the midst of difficulties. I think I'm strongest because I would have given up a long time ago. I have seen people come and go. I have seen people trying to pull me away. But you know what? I'm still standing. And I will, I will remain standing. Say, where will I go? It's the strongest. It's the strongest. Yes, I've got love, service. So there are, th there are things, this is how you look at things. What is your strongest? For me, I'll say perseverance. I have been so discouraged that I was almost at two percent, like like the battery said, uh, answering your call. Say any minute, any minute the call, the, the call is going to cut. Someone said, "Oh, you just said, God, can I can I still walk? Can I still walk?" But you will see supernaturally, you will say, "Oh, it's fifteen percent now." Say, so, "Ah, you look say, where's the energy coming from?" He, at times, he just do it by himself. So at times, perseverance is one of those things. You know, successful people are people with what you need persevere. You know, the definition of perseverance is in the midst of trials. You need to, you need to have a little faith also in perseverance. They say it shall be well. It shall be well. Trouble can come today. I think some chapter 30, verse 4 and 5, right? Let's check. I like us to read. Because it's a Bible study, let us read. That's how we know Bible verses. Psalm 30, verse 4 and 5, I think. Let's see. Psalm 30? Yeah. 4 and 5, I read. It says, Sing unto the Lord all your sense of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his angel endured but a moment. Hmm. Mm -hmm. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Okay. Actually, this is the part I wanted. For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So as much as you know, no matter how dark it is, light will surely come. Light will surely come. You know, there's a saying, there's an African saying, I don't know which country it is that says it. As much as change will surely come, a cat will never lay eggs. So things, no matter how bad they will, they will change, change will still, see, things will still get better at some point in time. They will get better. So perseverance, you hold on, say it will be better, it will be good, it will change for the so all things work for good. So perseverance is a very good quality. You may have faith, you may have love without perseverance. You see people with love after they come with love after six months and me, I don't tire or me, I don't tire. They go. Why perseverance? Service, they cannot endure when there is trouble, they go. So perseverance is one of the, they should be one of the strongest because if you have perseverance, you remember you are not born with you are not born with love. You learn to love. As you begin to love, you learn to stand stronger. So this is how you grow as a Christian. But perseverance is one of those things that you need to have by yourself. Love, love the Lord can give you some of those things, but perseverance, these are things that you cannot get in prayer. So what can you do to strengthen the areas when, where you are weak, Sister Noella? What can you do to strengthen the areas where you are weak? Let's say your faith is weak. What can you do to strengthen these weak areas now? You say, me, my faith is weak. Oh, I don't know how to strengthen my faith. What can you do to strengthen this, your, let's say, faith or your service? I'm not consistent in the way that I want. I'm not flowing. I want to be part of every program. I don't want to miss. I want to fellowship with the brethren. I want, you know, the fellowship of brethren. I there's this synergy which is created. I benefit a lot. 
with this electricity that comes, I come so fulfilled, I come with a lot of joy, but I'm not getting it. When I'm alone like this, I become so dull. There's no fulfillment, there's no joy. So how can you strengthen, let's say, this service? How can you strengthen this area if it is your weakest? Pastor, she's not available. She's not she's available. Not available. Mm. So Auntie, Auntie Oluchi, I'm a miracle. Andy, Jeffita, are you there? Up and house, sir. Okay. It's okay, what do you want me to say, sir? What do you, what uh, I, I'm, we, we're looking at the strength. Okay. Like, um, like, uh, like I was asking if somebody, like, what could be, what is your strength? Faith, service, perseverance, love. So if, if one of them is your weakest there, how can you strengthen it? How can you strengthen one of the weak areas? Let's say service. Let's say love. How can you strengthen this love? Me, you know, I do not like, you know, there are people, pastors who don't like people. How do you minister as a minister of God, especially pastor? How do you minister or evangelize when you hate people? How? I hate people also. But you are called to minister to people. How is it possible? It's a weakness, it's a weak thing. You cannot say you hate people when you are called to minister to people. Then go to the animals and you should have started veterinary, not to come and be talking to people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, first of all, I need to um um examine myself and to understand that yes he are weak in that area because wanting to find out that one is weak well maybe hurting without knowing that yes yeah we're not taking note of that so i will ask god to help me because i know it's not good so i'm going to pray to god to help me but this flesh cannot go to remove that spirit because i know it's a strength spirit it's not the spirit of god our lord jesus christ we should have his mind so I will see it as a, as, as a weakness to me, as a weakness. So I will pray for God to help me and try to op op open myself, allow myself, you know? <laughs> Sometimes it can come up, we rebuke it. Even imagination, I will rebuke it. So I pray God help me through his word because when we read the, when I read his word, the word will just speak to me, it's like a mirror. So I pray for God to help me to, 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 you know, to remove the, the burden. Unless you have not found it, if I have not found it as a burden, I cannot even bring it as a request. If I see that this is not good, and our God said it here, He will reward us according to our work. So we need to fear the fear of the fear of the word of God, the fear of God. I will pray, God help me take this away. Because I, I, I see it, I've seen it as a burden, as a hindrance. So I need to cry for God to help me and I open my heart in, in truth, not just to pray with my mouth, but to, in my heart. And try to do the what I can do by his grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the Christian life should never become stagnant, but it should be always be dynamic. Remember when we when I started teaching from babyhood to sonship, a Christian must grow. You must never become stagnant. There's always a potential potential to grow. If you stop growing, you die spiritually. So a, a Christian life should never be stagnant. You should never be at one place. You should be dynamic. That means you should be moving and growing. And we should become like Christ. So how do we, in what ways do we see progress and growth in our walk with God? How do we see our walk? So if you feel somewhere, somehow we are stagnant, in your work with God. You need to be honest. You know, when, when um, you need this like attempt to look at yourself, say, God, I'm not working with you. I'm not working with you. you. You have got this introspection. You say, God, I think the fire has gone out in me now. I really need some fire. When you look uh, at Luke chapter three, verse 16, 
where John the Baptist was telling the Pharisees and Pharisees, he said, he, he talked them about three types of baptism. He said, I'm going to baptize you with water, but the one whose shoes I cannot put on, whose latches I cannot touch, he said he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Three types of baptism. So with fire now, the one with fire, you know, fire has no respect. So when you ask yourself to be rekindled with the fire from heaven, so you need to take some steps. You need to look at God's word. Like and, and what Aunt said. Aunt said, God's word is like a mirror. When you are reading the Bible, God is, talk, God is <clears throat> talking to you. When you are praying, you are talking to God. This is how we communicate. That's why we call it the Rema. As you are reading the Bible, God is saying, oh, God, you are talking to me. That's how he speaks. That way, he hits to you said, oh, God, he is speaking to you. That's how he speaks. So at times we pretend like he is not talking to you. Say, oh yes, that's where it is for you, you personally. You know, the, you know how the Lord says now. Hmm. The instance is where I was reading the Bible. You know, I, I would just say, oh God, I cannot touch the Bible. You know, I, 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 there's a gift that God gave me. I was given a minister of the word. You just open the Bible or you are just given First Chronicles chapter 29, just 14, just like that. You know what it means. It's just the Bible verse is given to me just like that. You know exactly what it means. And exactly the interpretation I'm giving. It. Oh, so I don't ask anybody what it means because I know exactly what it means. So at times we become afraid so awkward. So there are certain things that you don't even need to ask anybody. You know what it means. Or when God is talking to you about somebody, you will just say, Second Timothy, this said, ah, okay. So he can speak to you through the word. That's how you will prophesy and say, ah, okay, it's him speaking. So you would know this is a word for this person. So when you begin to talk to them, when they open up and say, this is the word that I got for you, you said, ah, okay. Because of what is happening in their life, then you know. So as Christians, like I said, we must grow, we must be dynamic, and we must become like Christ. If you are not working with God, be honest with yourself and begin to grow. So criticism of the church and how does it contrast with criticism of Pegamon. Pegamon was a church which was married to the world. So he talks about the woman Jezebel. Jezebel, there was a teaching which I did about five or six years ago in this ministry. It was one of the eye openers. It opened, well, the teaching of Jezebel, um, that there's five of uh, verses in the book of Kings. First Kings chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. Then 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, 1 Kings chapter 18, same, same chapter Kings 18, 19 or 20, then 1 Kings um, chapter 19, verse 1 and 2, 2 Kings chapter 9, 20, 21 or so. You will find it there. So that, that's some of, that's some of the Bible verses where the um, Jezebel was mentioned. Jezebel is the woman that killed Naboth. Naboth was a man who had a farm, and this king Ahab was the husband of Jezebel. So he was a greedy man. He saw a farm. He said, oh, this farm is choice. I really want this yard. So according to the Israel, the, the um, tradition of Israel, you don't give anything that was given to you by your forefathers. You don't. It remains in the family. It runs in the generation. So he came home just like this. He said, ah. he said, ah, what is it now? He said, ah, is it not that boy in Naboth? He said, what did he do? He said, he refused. I asked him, say, give me that choice land that you. He said, no, I cannot give it to you. He refused. He said, are you not the king again? He said, yes, I'm the king. He said, leave it to me. This was, so the issue of Jezebel, let me explain briefly. Jezebel that you see, it goes back. It's not the Jezebel, it's Jezebel. Jezebel is just, um, it's a spirit that dates. Um, Jezebel is just a trade name. But this is for the spirit that is there is the queen of heaven. It's the queen of heaven. So the Jezebel, this Jezebel that you see that woman, she was dedicated to the queen of heaven. These are the attributes that she was. 
this Jezebel that you see, the one was married to Queen of Arm, to, to King Arm. It's not like she was, a, she is a depiction of evil in the Bible. She was the most cruel and evil woman that ever lived, according to the Bible. So there are those in this church of Thyatira who were not tolerating this Jezebel, but there were also others who were engaging in sinful acts. She, is, she was encouraging. So how does the believer get to that point where she becomes really swayed by lies? Homosexualism. My sons were telling me, they said they will come and say cancel culture. They say, who really cares? Is it not written in the Bible? I'm not the one who wrote the Bible. I was called to preach the word. Say yes. They said they will come and warn you. Warn me for what? I'm not preaching hatred. I will not come and defiate. Come and say, you know what? This man, he was born like that. He was not, he was not born like that. It's a lie. So Domingo Gomorrah was destroyed for that purpose. So we cannot come and start changing the Bible to suit a particular audience. We are not looking for anything from them. That's what God said. But people begin to give in. Those that are stealing, those that are dealing those acts. So for one niners, every one of them, they come, they miss in there now. So everyone is, so it's like a dance for the blind people. Every, this one is dancing facing this side. So you see, you do not have to see what I'm doing. This one is dancing this side, this one is doing this one. So everybody is comfortable in whatever they're doing. So the minister of God is getting money. Say, pastor, I want you to bless you. I want you to bless me. Oh, I've got $10 million. That 10 million was stolen from somebody who is crying. And you are, we are praying for a blessing to God for that money that was stolen. But somebody is crying to God. Say, God, will you punish that person that is stolen? How does it work? You, if you have got the spirit of God, do you not ask away what type of business that gave you 10 million? I've never seen you go to work or what type of company? Even CNN, I don't think it makes a lot of money like that. So how come you as an individual person you just wake up with such kind of money? Do you have a mind? No. So these are kind of things that is the servant of God. You don't just wake, say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray wherever that money has come from, just Father, Replenish. Replenish what? Servants of God get too excited. That's why people need to be taught. It's not everything. You rush. I mean, is lay your hands for what? People need to take their time. Off. People need to take their time. Don't rush and put your hands. Say you pray. Paying for what? Do you know where the money is coming from? Maybe it's money coming from a certain is you are just laying your hands for what? We need to be very careful about some of, some of those things. So Jezebel refused to repent. And there were consequences. And there will be consequences. This, this is the essence, what the Lord was trying to say. Jezebel was given an opportunity to repent, she refused. Repentance is the benchmark of entry into the kingdom of heaven. We did some teachings three or three years ago or so. It's very important to repent. And repentant heart, what are the effects? What are the results? You will go straight to hellfire. Because Christ will judge us for our deeds, should we, I mean, should bring fear to us and teach us to. Um, Christ is going to judge us, so it should bring fear to us, to those that are practicing falsehood. So we should not be comfortable in falsehood, being deceived and also deceiving others. So is he pleased with what we are doing, Christ? Are we causing another believer to stumble by our lies? Is there any area in our lives where we are unrepentant? especially insulting people and go and ask God for forgiveness. He's praying, Father, just to forgive me. Oh, no, why I continue insulting people. No, you insulted Brother John when you go and ask for forgiveness. That's pride. John chapter 5, uh, John chapter 5, verse 16. You pray amiss. Your prayers are not being We need to be careful. We need 95% of Christians 
they go to hell because of unforgiveness, pride and unforgiveness. They come. Remember the Bible verse that we were teaching on Sunday. Many that are first are going to be last. It must be something that it is something very scary. Those that are first, you will be last at the end of the day. Of what you see. Now we are sitting, we are enjoying the, ah, God, I didn't know this message is good. Good for what? If you were sleeping, you would have been enjoying your sleep. If you're watching a good program now, you would have been enjoying. But here you are, you want to learn, then grow. It's a futile exercise to just come and listen, coming from this ear out of that ear. Somebody is busy drinking now and dancing in a discotheque. Let's so just come, receive the word up in Rapta. Say this one, they are not going to, they are not going anywhere. Like you made a contract with God that you know everybody is going to be raptured. We need to be careful. Don't be presumptuous at the end of the day. So, brethren, let us ask God to search our heart. Psalms 139, verse 23 to 24. Ask God to search your heart. Let us confess our sins. John, first John chapter 2, verse 9. The chapter first John chapter 1, verse 9. Let us confess our sins because He's faithful to forgive us if we confess our sins. It's very important. So, what are the lies that the world and Satan convey to us that are contrary to the, to the word of God? Why do we always sometimes believe them over the word of God? Because at times we have got the inclinations, we have got preferences as people. There's a certain gospel we want to hear. We want to hear certain things, say, ah, this gospel sweet me. Ah, this one sweet me. That's what we want to hear. So the Lord said, hold on, hold fast to that which you have until he comes. That was a very powerful statement. Hold fast that which you have. So you can lose your salvation. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 24. Everything that you did will go on, will be counted at zero. Everything that you did will be counted at zero. So the one thing that keeps the conscience sensitive to him is the continual habit of open being open to God from the inside. Remain your heart open. I think uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. I think it says, uh, what does it say? Um, Guard your heart with all due diligence, for out of it is, are the issues of life. It's very important to guard your heart. Out of it are the issues. Guard your heart. Continue to ask God. God. When he speaks, do you listen? There are many people. Pride is what is killing Christians. Arrogance. So we need to be careful that we are not subtly deceived by the practices and teachings of the world, which are contrary to God's word. There are things in our daily lives that we are exposed to, which distract us or pull us from a closer look with the Lord. What could this be? So let us hold fast to the Lord Jesus Christ and this truth of the way. Are we holding strong or are we wavering? Let us hold to the hope which we need. For he who promised us is faithful. God is faithful. That I can say with absolute certainty. So he said, he who overcomes. Remember we talked about the rewards of the faithful. He who overcomes. All the seven churches. He said, he who overcomes. I'll give him. He would. So he gave two promises. He gave two promises to this church. Authority that they are going to rule with him. The other one, he said, the promises, the morning start to those who overcome. So what exactly was he promising? So he promised a messianic uh, rule over the nations of the world where he said um, the, the one thousand all over the 1,000 years. It's very, it's very, I, I think it's something that was um, coming back. Like for me, I would really want to rule in Austria if God allows me to come back. So no matter how life, um, no matter how dark life gets on this earth, we can always look forward to the future. 
are we ready for the glorious coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? If we are, so let us ask God to look for the areas in our life that need that refining and polishing so that we will be able to repent and do the needful. So what is the picture of what happened at the church of Titan? What is, I, I don't think we'll be able to cover the, um, the part with uh, Jezebel. I really wanted to go in the, the deep part with the Jezebel. I don't know whether I'll be given another opportunity to cover Jezebel if I come back by the grace of God. Dr. Chimi. Amen. I said because of our time, I wanted to get to the Jezebel, but Jezebel is long. We will not be able to finish. We will finish at 10. So, Can you come back, sir? So we'll do it as part two. So this one, we'll leave it as part one, then we'll come in as with Jezebel as part two. Then we'll look at Jezebel in the church, in this church, theater, and the characteristics of Jezebel. So that we can go in and check the person. Agreed, sir. That is why there's no woman who was called Jezebel. No sensible woman will call him daughter Jezebel. I don't know whether I've seen a woman who's called his daughter, a woman who's called Jezebel. Everybody knows the implications of calling their daughter Jezebel. Okay, praise the Lord. I leave you the Dachimi. Amen.